Hello, everyone, and welcome to Beckett Live. This is Beckett Live Presents, a Hobby Memories uh, Showdown with Mike Payne, Ted Barker, and Mike Gardner, who I'm adding to the list right now. We're all here. <laughs> hey, right hey, on time. <laughs> Gardner showed. Very nice. He's even wearing a Beckett shirt. He's got a Beckett shirt on. <laughs> Got a fit. How are you doing, and Mr. I got Gardner? My and I got my oh, 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 whoa, 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 he's here. Oh, that's that's right. Right. Oh, we are live. Oh, it's well. not that kind of show. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> what's in that bottle so, you're drinking, Mike? Mr. We're Mark live on the conversation. Air. Water, Ted. Yeah, okay, uh oh. We had a conversation with Upper Deck a couple of weeks ago that sparked this whole this whole idea for the concept for this show. Uh, I'm gonna let Mr. Barker lay that out. Ted, tell us tell us what happened because this is your idea. Well, I thought of Mike Gardner specifically because you asked the question of those guys. How did the Michael Jordan signing happen when he signed the deal with Upper Deck? And none of those guys were there, and none of them knew. They never even heard the story. And so after it was over, I told you. I said, Well, I don't know the Michael Jordan story. I could tell you Mike Gardner had an office three about three offices down from the Michael Jordan office on the same row in Upper Deck. But I said Mike was there when we were working at Upper Deck. We were out there for a sales meeting. And Mike said, look, guys, I'm going to leave early today because Bill Dully, myself, the, the, the marketing guy, I think it was Dan Bruton at the time, Jason Titano, who'd been working on the, the deal. We're going to meet with Tiger Woods. And so when they came back, we said, Mike, how did it go? And Mike told us the story of that whole of the whole contract signing and the big presentation with Tiger. And you take it from there, Mike. It's such a funny story. Did you get all that, Gardner? I can't hear a word he's saying. You can't hear a word he's saying. Okay. So what he just laid out <laughs> is <laughs> he hasn't well, listened to me in 20 years. The live, first meeting live radio. with uh, <laughs> <laughs> your first meeting with Upper Deck and Tiger Woods, and uh, you, we were told that you just have a, a fantastic story about how that went down. Can you please uh, lay that out for us, Mr. Gardner? Yeah, that's uh, we we were having a, a big sales meeting, and we got the call, and uh, from his agency that they wanted to potentially do a deal. So we had to jump and jump in our cars and drive down to closer to where his mom and we lived uh, in uh, Costa Mesa area, a little further maybe a little further north than that. So we got to this ballroom, set it all up, and we were getting ready to do the presentation. He was late. And uh, so there's this kid was in the first thing. There was this kid was in the lobby. And I happened to mention, hey, if you see her long enough, you got a chance to meet Tiger Woods. And so, you know, he came in about 45 minutes later. And after the whole thing was over, I'll come back to what happened in the meeting. But 40 minutes later, I saw the kid. I said, hey, did you get that autograph? He says, no, I froze up. I'm like, what do you mean you froze up? You're the only guy in the lobby. Come on, you could have free Tiger Woods autograph. It's kind of funny. The kid said, no, I didn't get the autograph. I froze up. So wow. anyway, we were uh, waiting. He comes in. He froze up. Yeah, he froze up. And then so he comes in. The Tiger comes in the meeting. This is live radio, straight. folks. This is what happens sometimes on, on live radio or live show. So. Uh, we'll, oh. we'll get Mr. Gardner straightened out here. We can hear him. I can hear him. I can hear All him. Right. He's doing great. He's okay. Good. So anyway, he brings in two big McDonald's bags, pulls out like four double cheeseburgers or four double uh, quarter pounders, four or five fries. I'm thinking, boy, he's going to feed everybody. Nope. He had them all himself. He ate them all about five minutes. His metabolism was so high. It's crazy. So – we go on to a meeting and get towards the end of it. We're getting ready to launch this thing called pen cam at the time where it had a little biometric. You started the pen when you put your finger, you know, get your thumbprint on there and then it would start the pen. And anyway, he signs two of the programs we have and I'm standing behind him. I'm literally two feet behind the kid. And I'm thinking to myself, boy, I'm going to get myself one cool collectible right here. And he, so he gets done and, and I get over to get to the programs, and he had signed his name, Jack Daniels, and he put a happy face on there. And I noticed, he, so he's picking up, he looks back at me, and he just says, not my first rodeo. So it's kind of funny. He, he didn't want to get, he, he kind of knew how smart back then is, you know, knew what his signature was going to be worth. And so he just looked at me and said, no, not today. Not going to happen. <laughs> but the deal happened. <laughs> yeah, the deal did happen, didn't it? Yeah, it happened oh, that day. Oh, the deal went down. It was a great I mean, deal. I mean, we had a. You know, we knew we had to make hay with that thing in the first year because that's the big rookie card we had uh, 
upper deck golf and we were doing SP authentic golf. And actually what's kind of funny is, you know, that I'm working with you guys now, but we went down to Beckett and started that, started the golf magazine. That was part of the, so we went down and met with Jim and the, and the guys back in the day. And we, we actually funded the first six issues of golf, the golf, the uh, magazine, just to make sure everything got published and printed and all the fun stuff that we needed behind it. And I think it folded in some point there afterwards because it wasn't enough on its own, but that was fun. Yeah, it was tough, Mike. I did the first 10 issues of that yeah. um, as the lead. And yeah, we, it was a fun venture and uh, we probably could not have launched without upper deck. Um, it was a fun magazine, but the market was just too narrow at the time, but it was fun. Yeah, I'm with you. We had a great time doing it, and you know, that set was fun to put together. I mean, I, I you know, kind of shudder, but that was back then. You know, we ended up getting Yu-Gi-Oh years later, but uh, back then, it, that was the biggest sports card release we'd ever done. Knowing that that deal was a three-year deal, fifteen million for the whole thing, so we had to, we had to make hay in that first year because we know second, third, not a whole lot of not a whole lot of fruit on the tree, so to speak. <laughs> That's a wow. huge deal. That is that's a that's a real big deal, uh, Mike, Mr. Gardner. While while we while, while we're speaking to you, uh, I've been told that you were a part of some of those early Kit Young Hawaii shows that you <laughs> might be able to share some uh, some details about. Can you uh, lay me lay me out a few there, stories? I mean, there are so many great memories. My, one of my favorites. I'll give you two, but one of my one of my favorite when we did a salute to um, the Dodgers and the Yankees, and we brought in. Uh, Johnny Padres, who had passed away now, and and um, and uh, oh, the old center fielder Ted, help me out. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, Tommy Davis. Anyway, Davis. Uh, and then we brought in um, uh, Don Larson, and um, shoot, why am I drawing Whitey this Ford. blank here? Big left. <laughs> running Whitey Ford. Ford. Help me out, Ted. Say, what's his name? Whitey Ford. Whitey Ford. That's correct. Whitey Ford. And uh, and so I pick up Whitey and Don at the at the at the airport, and Don and Whitey's so nice to Don. We're driving in the limo, and he's like, "Hey, good, good to see you, Don." And we're here celebrating this old, you know, uh, rivalry and this and that. And he said, "Yeah, you know, that '56 year was a great year, and boy, that perfect game." And then he gets to the cocktail in it, and he's like, oh, "Don, that that perfect game you threw in '56." Well, I tell you, I'm, I think it's another cocktail, and then by the end. He is so mad and so bitter. He's like, hey, you ruined my – because Whitey went like 36-4 and four that year, won the Cy Young, the, the Yankees <laughs> win the World Series, and nobody <laughs> remembers anything except Don Larson's perfect game. He was like 9-15 and 15 with like an 8.6 ERA, and Whitey was so sniveling mad. He's like – so by the end of the night, he's like, hey, Whitey, I, I hate you. You, you, you SOB, and he's just getting in his grill. And, and Don <laughs> – and Don Larson just didn't care. He just blew it off. He just like, oh, why do you go? You know, get away from me, kind of thing. So it's pretty. It's pretty funny. <laughs> just watching those guys get after each other. The other one was, um, I don't know if you remember, Mike, when we did the boat. When we had Tom Seaver and Gordy Howe, Joe Namath. We did the and we we launched it. We did the little green book with the card. You had to go to each of our events to get the cards. And anyways, I, I remember that. A, yeah, we did a huge deal. So I was picking up Gordy Howe at in Honolulu, and he and his wife were coming, and uh, I'm waiting in baggage claim. Here they come, and his wife's you know 20 yards ahead. I didn't really know her. I saw him, so they finally both come over, and he is just I'm talking out of the box pissed off, <laughs> and he's standing there, and this other guy comes walking him. He's got you know 20 30 feet away, and his wife keeps saying, "Knock it off, knock it off." I'm like, "Oh my God, what's going on here?" He's like. And he's like a grumpy, you know, just because he was a grumpy old guy. And she's like, knock it off. Just knock it off. So we finally we get to the limo. And I said, guys, what's going on? And he said, well, the guy 20 feet away who he was snibbling at had said something to his wife in L.A. because They went from Detroit to L.A., L.A. to Honolulu. And why do you want to beat his ass? And his wife kept saying, <laughs> his wife kept saying, knock it off. You're not going to hit him. Knock it off. She was if if it wasn't for his wife, that guy probably would have taken a bad beating that day. I'm pretty sure because <laughs> Whitey was a tough old guy, but he was mad because his wife wouldn't let him go fight the guy. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh now, boy, uh, Ted, I know that you spent some time at Upper Deck. You got anything comparable to that or or early days of of well, shows? 
I'll tell you how I got to Upper Deck. I got to Upper Deck because I was working for Athletic Supply in Dallas, and we were the largest mail order uh, a mail order catalog company in the country doing licensed products. And uh, Mike Gardner was my sales rep. That was when he was doing sales for UDA, and he came he he came to town, uh, and we forged a friendship. The first time he came with Bill Dully, who was the president at the time. Bill got so sick on the plane, he ate some bad breakfast or something. And I remember, Mike, you guys had to pull over on 635 so Bill could hurl before you came to the building. <laughs> he came in there, and, and um, we, we just we became their biggest customer. So um, we had a deal. We were licensed by the quarterback club, by the NFL, by NFL Properties Quarterback Club, and I did signings with all the quarterbacks in those days. And they had uh, – UDA was looking to sign Troy Aikman because the Cowboys, it was in the middle of their Super Bowl run. And Troy, uh, Mike called me and said, hey, you know, you're grandfathered in with your deal, but for all this memorabilia, we're, we want to deal with him. And they were, it was, it was uh, he was negotiating with uh, Upper Deck and UDA and Scoreboard. And he said, help us out next time you're with him. And I would do signings with him. I probably did 20 total signings with him and I would do, three or four seasons. So uh, I had one on a Tuesday morning after they, uh, after they played on, uh, it was their off day and we would do them at Valley ranch and they had played Monday night and they had gotten, they lost. And he just, he took it in the shorts in the press. They were all over it. So I'm in there doing this big signing and we're usually friendly during the signing. And I told him all the reasons during that day, you got to sign with UDA. They got this five point. They got this five step plan of authentication. They treat you right. They're going to build tremendous products for you. Gonna, they have a guy, Steve Sipe. He's going to come in and make the signing perfect for you. It's going to be fantastic. You got to go there. If you go with the other company, you'll do this. And I was I'm pushing him as hard as I could to go to UDA. He was so. I mean, he'd had such a bad game. Was not in a good mood at all. He didn't basically say a word. He just said, "You know, we're done here after an hour and a half. Yeah, good to see." You. So I said, well, I gave him my shot. Like two hours later, I get a call from Gardner. Gardner said, what did you do? I said, what do you mean? I had to sign a call. He said, his, the, his agent called, we're in. He just signed a deal with us. <laughs> nice. So from that, I think I ended up uh, ingratiating myself to Upper Deck, and, and that's how I got there. So we do the first. they do the first signing in Dallas, and I get invited to the signing. It's, in a, it's out by the airport at a hotel, and he's in there. Steve Sipes doing the signing and Bill Dully had come in. Uh, I think they're marketing guy. And I'm over there talking to them during the signing. And I see Aikman look up three or four times, doesn't say anything. And then about, about 15 minutes in, he says, Ted, why are you here? I said, I'm here talking to you. He said, how can you show your face after you tried to talk me into signing with scoreboard instead of these guys? He threw me <laughs> under the bus. But That's funny. It, all, it all worked out. We we had we had great days at Upper Deck. The the coolest thing about this industry, and Mike, you know it, Mike Payne. There's tremendous pressure putting out all these products and working all the deals with the players. But the the things that happen and the fun you have are, are stories that you, you just I mean you really can't make them up. You never know who's going to be in the building. Once we were at at Donruss, uh, when Mike when Mike and I were at Donruss, we had guys that we would just bring in the building. Maury Wills came in and did a did a big speech for us. Tony Hawk, we flew Tony Hawk in one day because Ann's son loved skateboarding and loved Tony Hawk. We we flew him in and he did a, a question and answer session and a signing session for all of us. And and then he, and we did a card for him. And then he got back in in the car. We went to Dickie's Barbecue on the way to the hospital, on the way to the airport, and he flew out all in one day. Those kind of things just happened when we were at. At Donruss, and we made those things happen, but it was, you never knew, you know, Mike might be doing a signing with Sidney Moncrief, and Sidney Moncrief, you look up, and there he's over there doing a signing with Mike Payne. That kind of stuff happened all the time. It just, just those things just made it so interesting to go to work, but I'll tell you the very, my very favorite story from my time at Donruss, and maybe my, maybe one of the best days of my life. Uh, we became friends with Mark Teixeira because Mike and myself and two other guys, played with a, in the you know, MLBPA golf tournament, Players Trust Golf Tournament in Phoenix, and we were paired with Mark Teixeira. We ended up winning the tournament. We got the, the nicest trophy I've ever seen is right up there. Uh, uh, Mark Teixeira 
said it's the centerpiece of my trophy collection in my house. Um, he had told us that Don Mattingly was his mm-hmm. favorite player. So uh, Scott Prusia was our athlete relations <clears throat> guy at the time. And, and Scott uh, and, and Ray Schulte and I, we kind of got together and we said, um, uh, I see Janice's comment. The Hank Aaron story is coming up. But, but uh, uh, John, uh, or rather, we, we talked to Ray Schulte and said, hey, uh, we need to get Mattingly and Teixeira together. And so uh, we, we called Mark and we said, I don't know if Buck Showalter has any fraternization rules, but would you like to have lunch with Mattingly? He said, you better believe it. And so I said, what about, what about Showalter? He said, don't worry about that. He said, I, I don't care if there are any rules or not. I'm going to lunch. So Prusha, Prusha rented a, a, a limousine, and he and I drove over to Fort Worth where the Yankees were staying. We picked up Mattingly. And then Ray Schulte and myself sat at a table at Casherelle Restaurant in Arlington, Ann's favorite restaurant, in a corner table during lunch. And for an hour and a half or two hours, Ray Schulte and I were just flies on the wall sitting there listening to stories going back and forth, uh, hitting technique, where your hands are in the zone, pictures that were on steroids, uh, all, all of these great just stories just forever and ever. Uh, and then we had brought 16 by 20s and they signed one for each other and left. That was that was a cool day. And Janice just asked about Hank Aaron. Mike, I could take it or you can take it. Uh, when we had Hank Aaron in the building uh, and had lunch with Hank Aaron, Mike Payne was there to cover it for Beckett as well. Mike, you, you probably have some memories of that day. Yeah, I do. And that was shortly before I came to, to Donruss. So I, I went from Beckett to, to Donruss slash Panini and back to Beckett. But yeah, Hank Aaron was, um, he was very cordial and um, his wife, Billy, was there that day and they they could not have been nicer to the people there. Um, you know, of course, people were getting autographs and mm-hmm. I was kind of off to the side, you know, because I had a little interview set up with him. And he kind of mumbled something about, oh, you know, this is like a card show. And his wife jumped on him right away and said, just sign it. <laughs> and he said, yes, ma'am. Yes, I sure will. Um, but he was a good, he was a good guy. That was a, uh, that was a good day for, uh, Donruss that day too. Yeah, it was fabulous. That looks like a lot of fun. That looks like a lot of- now, Mr. Payne, uh, you have an incredible story about the 2009 rookie photo shoot that I don't, be- I don't think people are going to believe. Please <laughs> share it with us. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, it's the way you got to put everything in perspective. And this was 2009 and at the rookie photo shoot up in Terrytown, New York, which is suburban New York city. Um, we were at the, the, uh, host hotel, which I swear to God was like the overlook hotel. It was, the, you know, the hallways were just flat out scary, but, um, the big deal then, you know, all the players, you had access to all the players. It was really a great setup. And um, I kind of felt sorry for Steph Curry because, you know, no one was really talking to him. The whole story then was Blake Griffin, of course, because he was number one overall pick. But I think the biggest guy in the room, both in stature and in fame at the time, was Hashim Tabit. Uh, everybody <laughs> wanted to be around to be and curry was kind of an afterthought i look back on that now and i i can still see it um you know he was he was back there just kind of minding his own business signing his stuff uh, you, you just never know you know there's one other thing from that same event at this at this hotel uh, we were they brought in some nba former nba players for the um it's a rookie symposium it's how to how to be an NBA player and how to conduct yourself. And, and it, it's, it's put on by the league. It's, it's really a good deal. Um, one of the uh, people they brought in was Spencer Haywood. Um, at the time he wasn't a hall of famer, but should have been, he ended up being a hall of fame a couple years later. But so I'm introduced to him in the hallway, myself and David Porter, David Porter is the basketball brand manager at Panini right now and has been for uh, several years. 
we had our backs. We were looking at a Spencer, but we had our backs to the hallway where people were coming. Well, all of a sudden, Spencer goes, hey, I want to David and I, hey, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. Uh, come here. And we turn around. It's Bill Russell. And, <laughs> you know, it was kind of startled. And he said, Bill, these are a couple of good friends of mine. And he called us by name, which he knew for maybe five minutes at the most. And Bill Russell could not have been nicer because if we're friends of Spencer Haywood's, we're friends of, of Bill Russell. So those were at the same event. <laughs> um, those are great memories. That's crazy. That's hey, Mike, crazy. Mike Gardner, I don't, I don't know how you first met Michael Jordan when you were at Upper Deck. When did you first meet Michael? Did Gardner hear me asking? I don't Michael. think he can hear you. Okay. okay. Hey, Mr. Gardner, uh, Mr. Gardner, Ted yeah. wants to know uh, the story about meeting Michael Jordan for the first time. Well, you know, his brother Larry, if, you watch, if you're watching the, the Bulls episodes that are going on, his brother Larry worked for me at Upper Deck. He was one of our sales guys. And it was, I, was, I was talking to Ted about this. I think it was the, it was the Tampa Super Bowl. Um, and we were staying over at the Fountain Blue over in, uh, over in Miami and commuting back and forth. And I can't remember the third athlete, but it was John Elway, Dan Marino, and then one other big athlete was starting a online business. And I can't remember. It was like Athletes Plus or – I just can't remember what the, you know, they were going to sell product online and their autographs and this kind of stuff. And they were throwing a huge party. Huge. There had to be 10,000 people in this big tented area. And we knew Michael was coming. So Larry said, hey, you want to meet my brother? I said, hey, you want me? I want to meet your brother. Of course I want to meet Michael Jordan. So we were standing in this VIP area and Michael shows up and it's like the red carpet at Hollywood. As soon as he started walking in, the camera started going off, flashes going off everywhere. And as he's approaching us, you know, now you're starting to get in the middle of this thing. And it's crazy. And we stood in the middle of this thing and, and you know, he shook his hand. First of all, his hands are like the size. I mean, they're like the size of a baseball glove. It was crazy how big his hands were. And we started chatting with him. We got to chat with him for about 10 or 15 minutes. And that's when I first found out. I'm a big UCLA fan. And I found out at that point, he said, yeah, I really wanted to go to UCLA, but they didn't offer me. I'm like, oh, that's, that figures for us, you know, way to go, guys. So, uh, but yeah, it was just incredible to be, and then the cameras going off and, you know, people kind of push in and it was pretty cool to meet him. I got to meet him a few other times after that, but that was insane to be in that, that kind of an arena, that kind of a you know setting and sit there in the middle and you're like, you're like, now you are the, you are the focal point of what's going on with 10,000 people. And I had no business being there. It's Michael Jordan, of course, Albie, but it was, it was a pretty cool time. That's a that's a great story. That's a great story, Ted. You were full of stories. You got anything better on Michael Jordan? No, not on Michael Jordan. The only time I met Michael Jordan was at a, a golf tournament here in Dallas. It was the Michael Finley Golf Tournament, and actually, uh, we played with Sean uh, Sean uh, Bradley. Uh, and the the group picture is awesome because he's two. You know, Scott Prusha is half his size in the picture, and we're all close to that, but. Um, that's, uh, we had a great time with, with, uh, Sean Bradley. We actually finished in the money and the biggest money was paid for, uh, the group that paid to play with Michael Jordan and Michael had his, like his guy with him. And he would basically hit and stay ahead of the group, like a half a hole. They didn't get to, they didn't get to be with him. I, I will tell you, I've talked about my best days, but, uh, Mike Gardner was was part of this setup for us when when we signed Willie Mays when we were at Donruss we signed Willie Mays to to a, a contract for package rights and appearances and those kind of things and Bill Dully who was the president at the time for Ann he wanted to put a face with a name he wanted Willie to be comfortable with us um, and so he sent Scott Prusha and me out to meet Willie welcome him to the Donruss family and just. So he would have somebody he could talk to. Uh, so we flew out. Scott and I flew out uh, and we drove to his home in Atherton, California. You go down this long driveway and around this little roundabout with a tree and you go and he's got a it's a it's a late 60s ranch style place, sort of a V shape with a big, long portico. We pull up and walk in. The maid says, yeah, he's Do he's right down the hall. Do what? You lose me? No, I can hear you. Oh, fine. Uh, I, I, Eric was having an issue. So we, we get into his, we walk into his house and we turn left and his maid, her, what she was doing that day was polishing a lot of his awards. So the entire long 
dining room table was full of silver platters that he had been awarded for some reason. We go into his room, we go into his den and we sit and we just have this long conversation, just getting to know him. It was, it was incredible. It was incredible. We took the, uh, we had coach purses for everyone that we kept at Donruss because we didn't know who would come in and, and we always wanted to give the, the player something nice for his wife. We, we brought a, a really expensive coach purse with us to give to his wife who at the time had Alzheimer's and didn't even re- realize we didn't realize that. So that was kind of a uh-oh moment, but we had a, uh, we sat out with him. We talked for quite a while. Two things happened. First, he took us out. Uh, uh, he said, let me come show you my office. And he had, uh, there was a, a pool house out on the other side of his pool that he had turned into an office. And it was, it was probably uh, 40, 50 feet long by about the same depth. And you walk in there and all of his awards were over all of the walls. And he had pictures with uh, literally every president up until that time. He had pres- He had pictures with several popes. One of the things that stood out to me was he grew up outside of Birmingham and uh, he had his high school diploma there. He went to something industrial high school in his little town. And on his diploma, it said his degree was his, he graduated with emphasis on pressing and dry cleaning. <laughs> That's what it said on his diploma. I'll never forget that. But he had all of his silver sluggers, all of his gold glove awards, MVP awards, every man of the year and his, uh, all, all of Hall of Fame, all, everything was in there. It was unbelievable. And in on one side was stacks of uh, cases of baseballs. On the other, stacks of 24 uh, Giants jerseys. We come back in and we're talking and Scott Prusia being, you know, funny Scott Prusia, we get ready to go. He said, that's it. You got nothing for us. And he said, no, I got something for you. And he told his maid to go out in the garage. He said, somebody brought me this wine. He gave us a, bottle, a couple of bottles of wine each. And, and he, and Scott said, I really don't drink wine or something to that effect. And he said, no, I got something better. So he gave us each a number 24, an authentic number 24 Jersey it wasn't signed, but he gave us a Jersey and right. Scott, you know, puts it on and, and and Willie said, I got something even better for you. And he tells uh, the he tells his assistant, who actually was Frank Robinson's niece, at, uh, the, who was working for him at the time, go get me a couple of my, and he whispers to him, he comes in. He brought us each a pair of his custom-made boxer shorts that he has made in Singapore. <laughs> Silk. I'm going to do a show and tell. I still have them. These are not game-worn, by the way. <laughs> They I say on the left, uh, if you, can you see it right there? <laughs> say, hey. say hey, 24. Say, hey. Very nice. I'm going to get these framed one day. Right now they sit in a position in my closet. But that was a, that was just the oddest thing. But we went back out two or three other times and spent time in his home, and it was just unbelievable. You're sitting in a museum, and there's a better museum outside. Uh, I want you all to know that the, the lasting impression coming from the show is Ted Barker has some Willie Mays underwear. That's all. Right. Gonna, not game gonna, worn, <laughs> not game used. M- Mike Payne. Uh, <laughs> oh, Scott Pruder chimes in right now. He says he still has his too. So yeah, uh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> it's a true that's story. It is um, a true story. We don't tell on true really. stories. <laughs> Mike Payne, tell me about the Donruss open air room. I heard something about a dog being in there oh. from time to time. Or we what's going on with that? <laughs> Are we going there? Yeah, we're going to go there. <laughs> Go there lightly. Back to the mic here too. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Don Rose office. Um, Mike Gardner certainly knows. Ted knows. It was an open air, um, no cubicle walls. Uh, Janice have, is watching. She knows. <laughs> Who is? Janice Mabry is watching. Janice, Janice knows. Yeah. But I had been uh, hired there. Uh, I had done some work for him as a contractor in 07, actually securing autographs and uh, signers for. 2011 elite extradition. Uh, so they hired me in 2008 as a full-time employee and I hadn't been there more than a couple of weeks when uh, Scott Prusha's desk was right in front of mine and to the right of mine were some management figures. And then Ann Powell's was kind of kitty corner and Ann was the owner at the time. Um, so I'm working and I swear to God, I smell something awful. <laughs> And I'm not real sure what it is, but it first you thought it was Scott, right? It smelled like something that you would find <laughs> in the yard. 
And so I turned around and just beyond my desk in the carpet was a big pile, um, which, uh, which the dog promptly walked away from. And, and I looked over at, uh, I looked over at the guy who hired me and I thought I'm going to get fired and I'm not even here two weeks. And I just looked at him and said, I'm not cleaning that up. And he just laughed. He says, I'm not either. <laughs> and he turned around and he turned around and ultimately he came and cleaned it up. But that was my introduction to uh, the Donald's Open Air uh, building. Um, I don't know if that's applicable to this show, but uh, <laughs> you asked. And so I told you. Janice chimed in here and said snoozer and sandbox in those days. Yeah, yeah. That make it yeah exactly. that's absolutely that's right, Janice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's a rite of passage for all new employees. Got to remember those. Yeah, the other thing about that, Eric, real quick, is that Ann never sat at her desk because she was, she sweated a lot. So she sat back in this conference room that we had. <laughs> and I swear to you, in the, in the middle of July, you'd better bring your parka because she had that thermostat set at about 27. I mean, it was nice. so cold and it was so cold in there. You li I literally had to put a jacket on in the middle of summer to go talk to her. I'm like, and she's like, oh, no, it feels great. And I'm like, oh, my God, you could, you could hang meat in this place. It was so cold. <laughs> I remember Kurt Cook doing meetings in there, and his nose would run every time. He was oh, <laughs> so cold in there. That's crazy. <laughs> so uh, Uncle Ted wanted me to bring this up. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I guess uh, Panini had a, 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 a personal um, America concert. I don't know how many times. They played a horse with no name, but to make this thing good. But Ted, tell me about this. No, Mike Payne can do it because Mike set up our personal content, our, our personal concert with those guys. And I'm sick of you. As I told you, they had six gold albums and they had like eight number one or number or top ten hits. So you can take your horse with no name out to the pasture. Yeah. Mike's got the story. It was it was for us and another guy. Okay, tell tell wait up, Mike. <laughs> Uh, it was the 2012 All-Star Game, Ted. It was in L.A. at the Staples Center, right? And yeah, 11 so, or 12. Yeah, the NBA had their party, and it was kind of um, a thing where this guy's playing here, this guy's playing here, this guy's playing here, and they're all kind of down in the same area. And there was a lot of buzz coming around because, oh, Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars was was playing, and so a lot there was a buzz. You know, we just wanted to go where there wasn't going to be a lot of people, and you could get to um, the appetizers and to the open bar. And so we get. There. I was going for the appetizers. Mike was going to the bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in that order. Um, but we get there, and lo and behold, there's our there's our good buddy Bill Walton, and and Bill has. Um, preceded us to the trips to the bar. Um, but Bill gets up there and, and we, I walk in and go, wow, America's here. That's cool. Ted, how many people were there? 15? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. That, that included the Dewey Bennell's wife and kids. Yeah. Yeah. Who's, who's the, uh, the taller half of America, by the way. Uh, but uh, Bill had a great time. And got up on stage and played the tambourine with them. Uh, probably a horse with no name. The second or third time they played it, Eric. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but at the end of the night, Bill's hanging in there, man. He's holding his own. Uh, he says, hey, Panini, come here. And you know, I got to get a picture with my Panini family. And so we got a great picture where Bill looks, you know, fairly good. Uh, <laughs> But that was fun because you, you could just let it go and, and to just see Walton just let it go. He didn't care. You no, know, he, he, Bill didn't care. That's pretty cool. That, that was fun. You know, you, you guys along with every song. You mentioned The Office earlier, and um, I want to uh, bring up in 2013, Golden Age, I, I think it was. It was the second year yeah. of three years of Golden Age. We had a. Um, we had six of the Bad News Bears, uh, the original Bad News Bears. And uh, so they were all on card. Well, I found out one of the guys, the guys who played the catcher, uh, Engelberg, uh, was local to that area of, of, um, of DFW. 
So um, tone stakes had arranged for um, the actor, Gary Lee Cavanero, to just bring his cards into the office. Well, he got there, tone was out. So they called me and I went up and um, picked up the cards and we started talking. I said, hey, I, I understand you live around here somewhere. Well, we're talking, it turns out he, he lived like three blocks from me uh, in Carrollton, Texas at the time. And I said, man, I go by your house every day. <laughs> uh, but we, uh, yeah, we ended up talking for about 30 minutes. It was, it was fantastic. It was, uh, it was uh, one of those things that's unexpected. That's great. That's a Another great thing was when in uh, 2009, um, uh, Golden, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Triple E, Elite Extradition, we were going to do some uh, high school jerseys. Well, um, this guy named Mike Trout was a first round pick, but he was down at the end of it. So uh, my job was to see if we could get, you know, a high school jersey from Mike Trout. So I called his mom, Debbie, talked to her for about 10 minutes, and she was actually going to sell me his two high school jerseys. I said, no, no, we just need one. And she said, ah, we don't need them. And I said, no, you, you'll want one. So um, friendship with her, she offered me two jerseys. We bought one. And uh, it was used in the product. Very, Very cool. cool. Very cool. That's awesome. I don't know if Mike can. I have, a, I have one product success story that stands above the others for me when I was at UDA. Um, I, Mike and, and um, Bill brought me in as bench strength. As soon as uh, the company I work for, Athletic Supply, got bought by Genesis Direct, and they were going to close it down and move everything to New York, and I was going to move. And I called Mike, and Mike said, don't do anything. We got a job for you. Just, just hold on. And he literally sort of hired me over the phone that day. And Bill said, "Your bench strength." And about six weeks into it, he said, "We're gonna, we're going to sell. Um, we want to revamp what we're doing on on TV shopping for UDA." If talking about the uh, the Jordan years, they had a show one night from uh, Jordan's restaurant. They did a two hour show with uh, Norm Van Leer as the guest host from his restaurant and sold over two, uh, $2.3 million worth of, of Jordan product during that time on the show that was on HSN or QVC, one of the two, I don't remember which, I think it was HSN. Mike could correct me on that. Um, but I, I started selling on Shop at Home. And if you don't know Shop at Home, Shop at Home was the network that sold overnight. And Don West was the gravelly voiced guy who would sell you a mountain of cards and there was a needle in a haystack in some of them. He was parodied on Saturday night live. Uh, uh, and they, they sold all kinds of stuff on there. Well, we started doing a show monthly, the upper deck show. They said, but they put a whole uh, uh, studio together that looked like a suite. And we would go in there uh, and sell UDA product and they would buy a complete set of Tiger Woods, 16 by 20s, whatever. But so Mike, uh, Mike and the upper deck team were well ahead of the curb with the master's collection sets. They were $6,000 retail. They came in a humidor. They did a, a number. We did a number of them. There was a Muhammad Ali. There was a NBA greats. There was a Gretzky, a Montana, all of those. But um, the Yankees master collection was the one that, that did the best, but they had sold through and it was their, their best effort. And, Mike and Dominic brought me in the room during one of the sales meetings we were having out there. And they said, because I, I didn't deal with the hobby uh, distributors that much that time. They said, how many of you guys know Ted? Well, I'm going to tell you who Ted is if you don't know. He sells the TV. And you slackers couldn't even sell 500 of these master's collections, and it's the Yankees. So we're taking them to shop at home. But here's, here's the deal. They have to sell them at full retail, $6,000. And we started out with twenty. dollars and I, I went to Nashville. We had, it was either Lou Brock or Bob Gibson. I had them both there. I don't remember which one was on this segment. And if an hour did well in the overnight between two, two and five in the morning, then they would replay that hour. Mm -hmm. Well, we sold, we sold out of all 20 that we had during the show. And so they kept replaying that show. And I'd say, I can get you 12 more. I can get you 14 more. I can get you 20. We ended up selling 262 of the Yankee master wow. collections over about a three month period on there. Wow. <laughs> and we and so it was over, it was over, uh, you know, it was a million, million uh, and a half dollars worth of product that they sold at full retail and shop at home. We sold all the others, the Ali and the, but none of them did more than 20, 25, 30. 
But that ended up being like a $2 million program just because we could. And Dominic wanted to kind of punish the the uh, distributors who he didn't think had pushed the product hard enough. There you go. That's a lot of product at full retail. <laughs> it was. $6,000. That's, that's, that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Yep. Stephanie is uh is is really shocked with that number two hundred and sixty two there. Two hundred sixty two. So, uh, I'll never forget it. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> All right, guys, we're we're gonna wrap this up. Um, thank you so much for joining me today on this bonus episode. Uh, I really appreciate you guys jumping on and doing that. Uh, Mike Gardner out there, you you got off on a you got off on a plane and jumped on the show. I really appreciate you doing that, sir. Let me leave you. Uh, let me leave you with one quick story, my favorite of all time. Okay, please. Because it's not about an athlete. It's about someone else, and you guys. When I tell you the name, you'll, you'll you'll remember. But I was working for Tops when my second or third time back there with big sales meeting, and during the break, I just asked one of the guys, "Where's Cy Burger's office?" And, oh, it's down around the corner, but he's never there. I'm like, that's okay. I walk down there, he's sitting there. So I I knock on his door, I walk in. He was probably ninety three at the time, and I chatted with Cy Burger, who I consider the godfather of trading cards. This very business that we sit in today, that we've all made a living on. I got to chat with Cy Berger for about 15, 20 minutes. The nicest man you'll ever meet. He had unbelievable, you know, he talked like, he talked about Mickey Mantle like it was his son versus, you know, <laughs> it was insane how cool this guy was. Great guy. And it, that's, that, that'll always be a treasure for me to talk to. I got a chance to sit with Cy Berger for 20 minutes by myself. So, my I got a whole bunch more. If you want to do this again, I'd generally jump on a call with you again and do this anytime you want to do that. Awesome. Mike Payne's got a Cyberger story too. I do too. Not as good as theirs. Uh, Cyberger, Mike Gardner is right. He was a nice man, uh, really friendly dude, and and kind of really um, enjoyed his place in uh, Americana. We were at a party, um, and I was with a guy named Mike Monson from Pacific Trading Cards. It goes back to the late nineties. And Cy Berger was there, and, and uh, I was introduced to him, and it was a cocktail party, and we're talking. All of a sudden, Cy just drops his drink on my on my leg and on my shoe, and could not have been more apologetic. But I just thought, well, Cy Berger just, just dropped his drink on my shoe. Uh, but I told him it was fine. It was you know he was embarrassed, but that's that was my encounter with Cy Berger. Nice man, though, just not Great a. Guy. You know, w watch yourself around if he was drinking. <laughs> Not that he was drunk. No, no, don't don't take it the wrong way. He was a nice man. Um, it was just one of those accidents, and I was in the way. Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to be it today. We're going to wrap this up. Uh, everybody who got shout-outs uh, says thank you. Scott Prusha says thank you. Uh, Donruss, Panini, Upper Deck, Tops. It was, it's been a great memory. You know, I think Gardner's onto something. Maybe we should do this like once a month and just have you guys back on and, and, and share stories. I don't think you're going to run out anytime soon. We won't run out. I got a bunch <laughs> more, I can tell you. <laughs> uh, hey, before we we go. Janice, Mar Janice says that uh, uh, Mike Munson was one of the nicest guys. So uh, Mike, that's great. Mike Munson. Awesome. All right, guys, Janice, that's going to do it. I'm going to I'm going to let you guys off the line. Awesome, awesome. I'm going to let you guys off the line. I'm going to show uh, some love to Dynasty Breaks here as we show their hits of the night. And uh, you guys, be well. Have a good weekend. Okay. Anyway, right, take care. One guys. last thing. Shout out to my wife. Happy Mother's Day. I love you very much. There you go. There you go. Good move. Take care, guys. See you later. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Bye-bye. All right, guys. As they jump off the line here, I'm going to go ahead and bring up our uh, Dynasty Breaks hit of the week, uh, hit of the night. They got some crazy, crazy hits that I want to show you here uh, from, from Dane and the team over at Dynasty Breaks. Make sure that you're checking them out. Remember, all new customers get $5 off their new uh, – new customers get $5 off their first uh, break as my son sticks his head in the window here. Uh, as he's eating an apple. Don't do that. That's not very nice to, to do that. How are you doing today? Good. He's good. Okay. All right. So I want to share my screen here with you. These are absolutely crazy hits from um, Dynasty Breaks. Dane, uh, if you follow us on Twitter, you know that I do a daily segment. Well, not a daily segment, but a, but a daily post almost about what hat is Dane wearing? So with that being said, on today, today's episode, of what hat is Dane wearing? 
I'm going to bet it's probably a Tampa Bay hat. We're going to see. And look at that. It is a Tampa Bay hat. Dane's wearing a Tampa Bay hat. But these are two Lamar Jackson select rookies that they pulled from the same case. I believe from like a box apart. So one's the prism and the other's the tie-dye prism. Those both came out today or last night when they were uh, doing their breaks. Those are absolutely fantastic. 2018 select prism, select uh, one prism, one tie-dye prism. Uh, so the tie-dye is, I believe, number 25. That are Those are just absolutely uh, insane to be coming out of the same case like that. Congratulations to the guys who had those pulled for them. And then, of course, we have one more here. This Kawhi Leonard uh, Panini's Choice Award. This is pretty dope, too. It's 2012 Kawhi Leonard Panini's Choice uh, Auto. Dane just pulls great, great stuff over there. He's wearing a socks hat here. So if you had socks hat and, and Ray's hat, you won this week. All right. Uh, thanks for hanging out with this bonus episode. I really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. I think you guys uh, enjoyed that. We might do this again sometime soon because that was a that was a great a great little jaunt down memory memory lane and some good industry insight. Um, be blessed again. Happy Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Go check out our. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna, before we hop off. I'm going to show you this. Uh, as well, because it's on our BAS uh, Beckett Authentication Services pay Facebook page. It's also on our Instagram page and our Twitter page for BAS. Make sure you you go get in on get in on this because we're giving away a hundred dollar gift certificate uh, for Mother's Day here. I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you the rules and the regulations, how you get entered. All you got to do is go to our Beckett Authentication Services Facebook page, our Twitter page, our Instagram page to get entered on this. But uh, we have a very nice gift to give away to – we're going to give away to three, three people this weekend, one on each page, one on each social media outlet. Um, as we give away a $100 BAS gift certificate that you can use towards authentication. So uh, what you want to do is head over to one of those three, three pages, Instagram, LinkedIn, or right here on Beckett Face on uh, Beckett Authentication face, Facebook, and share a story that uh, of an inspirational story of your mother, how she got got you into collecting, if she did. So we'll pick uh, three random winners uh, come Monday morning, and somebody's gonna three three people are gonna walk away with a hundred dollars to use uh, towards BAS. All right, that's gonna do it for me this weekend. Uh, thank you again to everybody who joined me this week. Look forward to next week. We got a lot of great shows. Gonna lay that out for you on Monday uh, with a, with a special post for that. Uh, again, Happy Mother's Day to my wife and to my mom. I love you. I love you both dearly. And uh, be blessed. Stay good.